what we're doing now is moving into the quantitative method study session two. This is the one, like I said, that was predominantly built up by time value of money sort of questions, um, applications to market returns, um, and also a little bit of statistics thrown in for good measure. So again, this is where you really, really need to make sure that you understand the use of your calculator in the most efficient manner, making sure you get used to the multiple functions that it kind of carries out for you. I think the biggest you know, issue for people just starting their studies is just getting used to it, and that will come with time. The more you practice questions, get used to the calculator, you will actually find that it actually becomes you know, a really useful tool for the exam. So what we've got here is Jane receives a five-year, $100 annuity, interest rates of 5%. Which of the following is closest to the PV, that's the present value of the annuity? And it says there, firstly, assuming that the payments are received at the start, just make a note on my answers, and then secondly, at the end of each year. So we've got two different sort of assumptions as to how we receive these payments. Now, remember, how does this work? Well, an annuity is an instrument that pays you a fixed cash flow for a given or what we call a finite period of time. So in this case, that's going to be over a five-year time period. So one, two, three, four, five. You know, sometimes drawing timelines can often help you out. It makes you get a view as to where the cash flows are occurring. And obviously, this would be year one. We would have year two, year three, four, and five. It goes over a five-year time period. Now, let's make an assumption, first of all, that the payments are at the end of the period. You're going to receive $100 at the end of year one, $100 at the end of year two, year three, year four, and year five. So under this assumption, we've got end of the period. That's where in each given year, the cash flow occurs at the end of the period. And we're asked to work out the present value of those cash flows. So all we need to do, remember this is referred to as an ordinary annuity. All we need to do is use our calculator, set it up. Remember that you have on your calculator on the third row, you have all of your time value of money buttons, and we can insert values to then solve for the unknown. Now remember that before we use it, what we should do is to make sure that we clear the calculator, make sure that those buttons are set to zero, if you like. So remember, pressing the second button. You have the second button here, and we press the FV, that's the future value button, third row on the right-hand side, that would clear the time value of money. And what that would do is make sure anything stored on those third row would actually be set to zero. Now what we're going to do is go across, remember, we've got their N, we've got the term IY, we've got PV for present value, PMT for payment, and then also FV for future value. Now all it's doing is using that kind of discounting and compounding assumption, so remember, any present value is equal to a future value divided by 1 plus what we call the discount rate to the power of n, which is the number of compounding periods. And we're obviously using that formula on more than one cash flow because there are five cash flows of 100 and working out the total present value. So in this case, what's the length of this annuity? Well, it's 5. So we're going to set n equal to 5. The discount rate says in the question, interest rates are 5%, so that would be a relevant discount rate. That's your R in the calculator has IY, so that's 5. The PV is the unknown, that's what we want to solve for. Um, the payment, that's the annuity amount, that's $100 every year for five years. The future value is zero. There's no lump sum at the end of the timeline outside of the 100 payment, in which case that's going to be set to zero. Now what we do is we press the number first, so we press 5, and then we'd press n, and it would say n equals 5. We now know that 5 has been stored as m. So remember the, the number first, then assign the button to it, so 5 and then n, 5 iy, 100 is the payment, 0 future value, and then ask it to CPT, compute, top left hand corner of the calculator, PV, 
computing PV, you'll find that when we do this under the assumption of being at the end of the period, we would have answer B, which is 433. So just checking that on my calculator, 5 is my N, 5 IY, 100 is the payment, 0 future value, compute PV, and we've got 432.95, um, and that's obviously 433. So that has allowed us straight away, given that we've got at the end of the period assumption there, to work out the answer as B straight away. But remember, what we need to do is consolidate this and say, well, what if actually these payments occurred at the start of the period? So, you know, just looking at my timeline here, um, this would still be a five-year annuity, but the difference is now is that when we have each year, remember this is a five-year time period, the cash flow of 100 occurs at the start of the period rather than at the end of the period. So in, w in this case, we've got our five cash flows, but the difference is now is that those cash flows occur at the start of each period. So we can see here the cash flows over a, a five-year time period. Now, what we can do here is the calculator can actually be changed. Um, this is known as an annuity due in the curriculum, and that makes an assumption that the payments are made at the beginning of each period. So if you look on your calculator and you look at the payment button, just above that you've got BGN, to get access to that, if we press second and BGM, so second and then the BGM button, you'll see on your screen it will say end mode. This means that currently your calculator is assuming that the payments are at the end of each period, but obviously that we want it to set it at the start. So if you press second and then the enter button, so second and then enter, what you'll do now is make an assumption that the payments occur at the beginning of each period, so BGM. So my calculator now says BGM, and you can see that in the top left hand corner, uh, top right hand corner of your screen, it will say BGN for the fact that it is in begin mode. Now the numbers would already still be stored in the third row, so you wouldn't need to um, you know, insert those again. If I press compute and then present value, I can see here that I've got 454.5. That's making an assumption that the payments are at the start of the period. In other words, think of it as begin mode. And I have 454.59, an answer 455. Now that's where we've changed it into begin mode. I guess what you could have done is you could have kept it in end mode, if you like. Um, if it's in end mode, let's just think about this one. Just insert a slide for this. Remember that this was a five-year annuity. So if I draw out my timeline, um, we've got a 100 payment occurring at the start of each year for five years. So there are five, five payments of 100. Um, if you were stood at time zero, you could look at this and say, well, actually, I could have in year one a payment of 100 at the end of the year, in year two a payment of 100, and going forward, can you see that you have a payment of 100 at the end of the next four years? Work out the present value. If you haven't already thought about it, that's the present value of what is an ordinary four-year annuity. And then say, well, actually, the only difference is now I would need to add to the absolute value of those present values, 100, add those together, and then you have mimicked what is a five-year that is an annuity due where the payments occur at the start of each period. So say that again, we could do n equal to 4. You've got <coughs> the discount rate of 5%. The payments we know would be 100. The future value is 0. Compute the present value. So I'll just double check this. 4n. You've got 5iy, 100 is your payment, zero future value, compute PV, 
compute PV and I get 354.595. Remember, ignoring the negative sign here, which is looking at the absolute number, the present value of all of those cash flows. And then finally, what I would need to do is to add the 100 cash flow at time zero, because remember the 354 would be the present value of all of those 100 cash flows, and that would give me a total, obviously 454.595, and again that gives you your answer, which is B in that case.